This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, shalom everyone. Now we're uh, continuing to drive through Provence. I want to speak about one of the luminaries that lived in one of the cities here in Provence, in Perpignan. Rabbeinu Menachem Hameiri, the Meiri. 1249 to 1306, 57 years. The Meiri has a stunning explanation for the story of the two ladies that came before Shlomo HaMelech. They both had a baby. They slept with their baby. One of them crushed the baby. The other child survived. Each one comes in front of Shlomo HaMelech. Each one says, Kulo Shali. The surviving baby is my baby. So Shlomo HaMelech had a brilliant idea. He said, split the baby in half. And one woman said, no, no. And the other one said, yeah, great idea. And Shlomo said, he imai. The mother that didn't want the child split in half, that's the mother. And the Meiri asks, how could that be incontrovertible evidence in Dine Nefashis? It's circumstantial evidence. Just because one of them said, good idea, split in half, does that mean for sure it's not the mother? Maybe the baby was a a difficult child. The Meiri says this cannot be admissible evidence. So the Meiri says something that's just out of this world. He says, these two women that came before Shlomo Melech, they were a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. Both of them, their husbands died. Therefore, if they each have a child, each one is exempt from falling to Yibam. However, the one that really died, the daughter-in-law's child died. So now, not only is her husband dead without a child, without heir. But she has a brother-in-law because her mother-in-law has a baby. She's now zakuk to Yibum to her mother-in-law's son, to her brother-in-law. And the kid is only a few days old. So she's going to have to wait 13 years to extricate her, herself from this very impossible situation. So she wanted to say that the child that is alive is her child for two reasons. Number one, if she has a child and the one that died was her brother-in-law, there's no one for her to fall to in Yibam. And number two, if she has a child, she's putter from Yibam. So when Shlomo HaMelech said, split the child in half, and she said, yeah, great idea, split the child in half. So what that does is, is now she doesn't have a brother-in-law to fall to in Yibam, and she's off the hook. And this way, uh, when Shlomo heard her, her agree to the proposal of split the child in half, Shlomo realized exactly what was up. He knew it was a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, and he knew that the reason why the daughter-in-law wanted to split the kid in half is this way there would be no yavam for her to fall to, says Rabbeinu Menachem Meiri. Now, there's very, another very interesting and innovative comment in Meiri. The Meiri in his Hakdama to Perki Avais lists the generations of the Makabli Hatoira uh, going all the way from Moshe Rabbeinu until his day. And he talks about in the era of the Ga'inim, there was someone by the name of Rabachoi Goin. And Rabachoi Goin had a son, Shaloi Haya Roitza Lilmaid Klau. Rabachoi Goin had a son who did not want to learn at all. Says Meiri, you ever wonder? That until Rabbi Choygoin, those who compiled halachos, compiled it based on subject matter. Nobody ever wrote halachos on the parshios. That seems somewhat elementary to write halachos on the parshios. But Rabbi Choygoin had a child who didn't want to learn. So in order to encourage, inspire the child to learn, Rabbi Choygoin utilized the new formula of learning. Namely, if the kid doesn't want to learn in a regular way, you need to create, you need to invent, New ways for the child to learn. So from this Meiri, we see an important principle in Chinuch that the Messiah is that you teach. You know, people say, no, it's not the Messiah to use color magic marker. They didn't use it in Europe. In Europe, they didn't use this. They didn't use that. Here's the Messiah. You do what works. If the kid doesn't want to learn in method A, you do method B. I think Rabbi Achoy Goin is a good precedent to uh, demonstrate this uh, approach. Very interesting. The Meiri quotes from Yushalmi that we don't have anymore and nobody has. 
the Meiri had pages of the Yushalmi that we no longer have. And what's very interesting is that the Meiri would often quote Rashi, the Ravid, the Rif, the Rambam, the Rimagash, the Rashbam, <clears throat> without saying their name. Instead, the Meiri dubs these Rishonim with a very interesting name. So let's we're gonna have we're gonna play a little game now. Who could guess? Who was Gadol Harabanim? Who was Gadol Harabanim, the greatest of all the rabbis? Gadol Harabanim. Rashi. Rashi, the Meiri calls Gadol Harabanim. This I said earlier today. Who does the Meiri call? Gadol Hamifarshim. Who is the greatest commentator on Shas? The Ravid was Gadol HaMafarshim, the greatest commentary on Shas. Who was Gadol HaPoiskim? Who was the greatest halachic authority of the Rishonim? Says Meiri, the Rif. Who was Gadol HaMechabrim, the greatest author? You're doing good so far. The Rambam. The Rambam. Who was Goine Sephorad? Who was the wisest sage from Spain? The Rimagash. And let's see if we could go for a perfect record over here. Chachme Hatsarfosim, the wisest of all the Frenchmen. The Rashbam, Rabbeinu Shmuel Bar Meir. So here we have six. We're gonna we're gonna try it one more time. Okay. Godol Horabonim. Rashi. All right. Godol Hamafarshim. The greatest commentator, Ravid. the Ravid. Gadol HaPoiskim, the Rif, or Abdoiv. Gadol HaMechabrim, the Rambam. Goine Sparad, Rimagash, Chachme HaTzarfosim, the Rashbam. Okay, one final thought from Rabbeinu Menachem Meiri. He says, what is the Tachlis of Chodesh Elo? We're about to approach Chodesh Elul, you know the Svarim say Av stands for Elul Ba. Elul is coming. It says, what is the Tachlis of Chodesh Elul? says the Meiri, Roi Tachlis Elul Lehishtadel Kodem Rosh Hashanah Behavtsaras Tvila to supplicate incessantly. Why? Kedei Sheyichnois L'Rosh Hashanah Betaharas Halev. When you stand before I call this Baruch on Rosh Hashanah, you want it to be with purity of heart, and all the added tefillahs, and all the added slichahs, and all the extra davening we do, when you daven incessantly, excessively, when you daven more than you usually do, it's the metaher, the lev, that is the tachlis of Chodesh Elul. And therefore, says Meiri, every Monday night, every Thursday night in Elul, one should stay up a little bit later. Be'eriboy ha-tefillah, k'de'er l'taher li'boy, l'amay l'fnei Hashem b'Rosh Hashanah, the Taharas Halev. Rabbeinu Menachem Meiri Bechusa Yagen Elena. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.